Hi, I'm Chris, owner of Klinger Holsters. I want to personally thank you for choosing Klinger Holsters for your concealed carry needs. We've designed our holsters to be painless, less awkward to use, and easier to use all around. We've put together this video for you to show you how to adjust your holster for cant angle, ride height, and retention level. Also, we'll show you how to convert your holster into different holster types. Tighten or loosen these retention screws to adjust the retention level of your holster. Most people will want the retention level to be somewhere in the middle, not too loose and not too tight. You can loosen the retention screws like this, and this will allow the gun to fall out of the holster easily if you shake it. Or you can tighten the screws down like this, and it'll make it quite difficult to get the pistol out of the holster. The gear holster can be adjusted to 12 different configurations. It has a standard ride height and a higher ride height, left-handed and right-handed, plus the cant can be adjusted to negative, positive, or zero cant. If you ordered a clinger cushion, make sure the narrow end is toward the top so it doesn't interfere with your grip. Use the zero degree cant for appendix carry, the positive cant for behind the hip, and negative cant for cross draw. If you need more hand clearance, you can easily adjust the ride height. Plus, it's ambidextrous for left-handers too. To adjust the cant angle on your gear holster, simply remove the screw holding the clip down to the gear. Then, put the clip back on the gear in the cant that you wish to carry the holster in, and replace the screw. You can also raise the ride height of the holster by lowering the gear. To do this, simply remove the screw and post and rotate the gear down, then replace the screw and post, and retighten your screws. Now, you'll just put the clip back on the gear in the desired cant. The IWB and OWB hinge holsters can also be adjusted for ride height and cant angle. The IWB hinge holster uses these holes to move the clips up or down. This adjusts your ride height and cant angle. To reposition the belt clip, Simply remove the screw and post, and then move them to the new position. By moving the clip to this top hole, we've lowered our ride height and increased our cant angle. This does help with concealment. The IWB version will use the outside holes on the hinge tab, while the OWB version will use the inside holes on the hinge tab. It's very easy to convert the IWB hinge holster into the OWB version and vice versa. To demonstrate, We'll convert this IWB hinge holster into an OWB hinge holster, and then we'll convert the OWB hinge holster back into an IWB hinge holster. You'll simply remove the screws from the IWB hinge holster and pull the post out. The same is true for the OWB hinge holster. You'll just want to pull both clips off by removing the screws and the posts. Both of these holsters are virtually identical when you remove the belt clips. Now we're going to take the OWB clips and we're going to put them back on the other holster. We recommend mounting your belt clip on the bottom mounting hole of the cling tab. This gives your hand more clearance when gripping the firearm. Notice that the posts come in from the opposite side of the hinge tab and the cling tab when you're putting on the outside the waistband clips versus the inside the waistband clips because your clips are going to be on the other side of the holster. Also take note that the hinge tab has holes toward the outside of the hinge tab that are used for the IWB clips and you'll want to use the holes closer to the body for the OWB clips. We'll finish this conversion by moving the still inside the waistband clips over to the other holster body. Remember for the IWB version you'll want the clips on the front of the holster. That means you'll need to push the post in from the back of the holster. Before you reinstall the belt clip, make sure you put down the rubber spacer. The rubber spacer adds enough friction to hold the belt clip steady. It's a good idea to try out a few different cant angles and ride heights to really figure out where the holster works best for you. After that, we recommend using Loctite on your screws to help hold them in place. 
For the IWB hinge holster, you'll want to use the holes further away from the holster body to reattach the belt clip. And again, don't forget the rubber spacer. The beauty of this holster is the design. You can swap it from OWB to IWB and vice versa simply by changing your belt clips. Plus, you can convert our hinge holster into the gear holster or our low ride holster. Let's take a look at converting the hinge holster into the gear holster. First, you'll want to remove the hinge tab and the cling tab with the screwdriver. Make sure to hold onto the screws and posts that come off the cling tab. Those are the retention screws, and you'll want to put those back into the holster. I was careful not to move the rubber retention spacers here. If the rubber spacers did move on you, just line them back up with these holes. Don't forget, after you get the retention dialed in to where you want it, it's always a good idea to use Loctite to make sure they stay put. Now we've moved the hinge tab and the cling tab off this holster. This gear clip needs to be mounted on to complete the process. I'll just borrow it from this holster here. After you remove the gear clip, you'll just remove these two screws and posts holding the gear to the holster body. First, we'll push the post in from the back of the holster body. Then I'll mount the first screw. Now I'll line up the other post with the top hole in the gear and mount the other screw. Now we'll adjust the gear clip to the right cant and place it on the gear and drop our screw in. Now we've successfully converted our hinge holster into the gear holster. This is useful if you want to carry your holster in the appendix carry position as the hinge holster won't work for that position. Now we'll cover how to convert a gear holster into a low ride holster. You'll want to move the gear clip and gear off the body and grab your low ride clip. First, remove the retention screws. Now hold the low ride clip over the retention holes and grab your retention screws. You will not need the finishing spacers for this step. Now tighten the retention screws until you get your desired level of retention. You may have to loosen them or tighten them to get the retention level exactly where you want it. That should just about cover any questions you might have on how to convert or adjust your holster. Oh, I almost forgot. What's this hardware bag about? Our Kydex holsters have retention spacers and screws to adjust the retention. If you have to loosen the screw too much or tighten it down too tight to get the retention level you want, then the screw might be barely holding on or it could be protruding through the back of the holster like this. If the screw is protruding through like this, you'll want to use a shorter spacer and screw. If you loosen it enough that there's only a couple of threads hanging on, you'll want to grab a longer spacer and screw. Don't forget to grab a clinger cushion. It's by far the easiest way you have to make concealed carry painless. And as you can see here, it's thin enough that it does not interfere with great concealment. If you have any questions on how to use or adjust your holster, or on concealed carry in general, shoot us an email. We're happy to help.